Hi, this is Ben Finio from Science Buddies, and this video will introduce you to our Squishy Circuits activity. Squishy Circuits were originally developed in the Thomas Lab at the University of St. Thomas. First, we just want to introduce you to the components that come in your Squishy Circuits kit, which you can purchase in the Science Buddies online store. Some of the materials you won't need to start out, so you can put those aside. That includes the motor, which is the shiny metallic cylinder, and the two buzzers, which are the black plastic containers. You're not going to need those to start out, so you can just put them away. So we just want to focus on the LEDs, which are these little translucent plastic bulbs with metal wires sticking out of the bottom. And the battery pack, which is the black rectangular container with red and black wires sticking out of it. So get those out of your kit to start. There are some additional materials that do not come with your Squishy Circuits kit that you will have to purchase separately. That includes four AA batteries, some Play-Doh, and some modeling clay. You can also make your own homemade Play-Doh and modeling clay by following the directions on our website. You can find the link to these directions in the description of this video. Putting the batteries into the battery pack works just like any other toy or TV remote or battery powered device that you've probably used before. Simply pop the back cover off of the plastic case and then insert the batteries into the battery pack, making sure that the plus symbols on the batteries line up with the plus symbols on the inside of the case. And then when you're done, pop the back cover back on. It, you should hear it click into place, and then you're all set. For your very first squishy circuit, all you're going to need is two lumps of Play-Doh or your homemade conductive dough, an LED, and the battery pack. Take the metal terminals attached to the wires on the battery pack and press one of them into each lump of Play-Doh. So here I have the red wire and the black wire, and I've separately pressed one of the metal leads into each lump of the Play-Doh. Now take your lumps of Play-Doh and put them close together but not touching. Now take your LED, and remember the LED has two metal wires sticking out of the bottom called leads. Spread those apart slightly so you can press them into each lump of Play-Doh, again with making sure that the lumps of Play-Doh don't touch. Now reach back and turn your battery pack on and the LED should light up and you have made your first squishy circuit. This allows electricity to flow from the battery pack through the red wire, through the Play-Doh and the LED, through the black wire and back to the battery pack to complete the circuit. Now if your LED did not light up on the first try, don't panic. You can see here I have the LED plugged in and I turn the battery switch on and the LED doesn't light up. All you have to do if that occurs is take the LED out flip it around so the little metal legs are facing opposite directions, plug it back into the Play-Doh and it should light up. This happens because LEDs act like one-way valves for electricity, so they only let electricity flow through in one direction, and if you have the LED plugged in backwards, that'll prevent the electricity from flowing and it won't light up. You can tell which way to plug in the LED by looking closely at the metal legs, one of which is slightly longer than the other. You want to plug the longer leg into the Play-Doh connected to the red wire and the shorter leg into the Play-Doh connected to the black wire, and this should ensure that your LED lights up. Even if you think you have it plugged in the right way, the first thing you should always do if your LED doesn't light up is just try flipping it around. Now let's say that you want to get a little more creative and build a more complicated sculpture and not just have two lumps of Play-Doh. This is where you have to be a little more careful. Watch what happens if I take these two lumps of Play-Doh and press them together. You see that the LED immediately goes out. This is because I created a short circuit. This occurs in a short circuit because electricity likes to take the path of least resistance. You can kind of think of it like how water flows. It turns out that it's actually easier for the electricity to flow through the wires and then directly through the Play-Doh if it can find a path that only goes through the Play-Doh and it's harder for it to go through the LED. So you can avoid this by introducing modeling clay or your homemade insulating dough. It turns out that Play-Doh is a conductor, meaning it lets electricity easily flow through it, whereas modeling clay is an insulator and it does not let electricity flow. So now what I can do is take a piece of modeling clay and insert it between these two lumps of Play-Doh. Now when I press them together, you can see the LED stays lit because there is no short circuit. The piece of insulating modeling clay is preventing electricity from flowing between the two lumps of conductive Play-Doh, so the electricity has to flow through the LED and it lights up. So this is an important trick to remember if you want to build a more complicated sculpture, you have to use modeling clay to insulate the two sides of the LED from each other and prevent creating a short circuit. Now finally, you probably want to use more than one LED. 
All you have to do to add more LEDs is take them and do the same thing you did before, spread the metal legs apart slightly, and plug them in right next to your first LED. Now if it doesn't light up, remember that all you need to do is flip it around. You see that this can happen independently. It's possible for one LED to be lit up while the other one is out, depending on which way they're each facing. So I'll plug this red LED back in, and finally I'll bring in a green LED and plug it in. So you can see I have three here, and I can take them out one at a time, and the other two will stay lit. So now you can experiment with this and see how many LEDs you can fit into your sculpture and how far apart you can make them. They don't have to be right next to each other like you see here. Once you understand the basics of squishy circuits, you should challenge yourself to come up with an even more creative sculpture. You can find the step-by-step -step written directions for this project in the link in the description of this YouTube video. You can also visit us at www.sciencebuddies.org for a library of over 1,000 free science and engineering project ideas. Finally, we'd again like to thank the Thomas Lab at the University of St. Thomas for developing the Squishy Circuits concept.